Hey, welcome everybody to You Can't Make This Up. Well, we'll start with some real stuff, then we'll start, then we'll have some really good stuff, and then we'll go well to the funny stuff. So let's start here. Uh, this is regarding Israel. And uh, as things are escalating, what's going on with Israel? Well, it seems Russia is getting involved, or has been involved, I guess we should say. Russian weapons help Iran harden defenses against Israeli airstrike. As we continue to watch what's going on with Israel and uh, what's going on with Russia, listen, as I uh, mentioned in my update, what do we have with Russia? We have Russia that his is a guard, uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 7, uh, Gog the leader, Magog has become a guard for all those troops that are going to be coming against Israel in Ezekiel 38. We are not, I want to reiterate this, folks, we are not at Ezekiel 38 yet. We're not any actually anywhere near that. It's not going to happen tomorrow either. I've explained that last week. I'll probably do a little bit more on that Sunday night just to help people understand it. But we're not there yet. But it is interesting uh, Russia is definitely getting more and more involved, and they will continue to. Can't make that up. Here's something else. Bank of America is caught. Look at this discriminating. Oh, let's see. B of A accused of religious and political discrimination by debanking or refusing to service Trump supporters, Christian churches, and Republican-led states want answers. Imagine that. I mean, I know that's not exactly a surprise to anybody that's out there that is a believer, or somebody who votes conservative or something like that. You're thinking, no, been saying that there's discrimination for a long time, and we're getting constantly uh, gaslit over these things. When you bring out the facts, bring out the truth. But that's what they continue to do. All right. So uh, check this out. California loses, look at this, lost track, loses. $24 billion, they lost track of $24 billion spent to combat homelessness. I mean, I wonder whose pocket all that money went into. Um, I can only imagine uh, where all of that money went. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see. What about those evil politicians? Well, check this out. This happened. 26 barges got loose. Did you see that? Extensive damage, 26 barges float uncontrolled down Ohio River, bridges shut down. Now, this happened a few days ago. I'm looking at this going, you know, it's true. You can't make this stuff up. How do these things happen? 26 barges? Uh, uh, uh. All right, one more thing <clears throat> on the serious note. What do we have here? Check this out. One of the leaders of Hamas was executed. Guess why? It tells us right there. Hamas executed one of its senior commanders for being part of the LGBTQ plus community. Where are the liberals to condemn for condemn it? Uh, you look at that and you go, okay, here's the facts. Over here in the United States of America, it just seems like uh, people do not get that Hamas is a terror organization. This is what Islam does. Uh, these are facts. Amazing how these things just get by people. Okay, let's get some good news. Then we're going to go to some of the humorous stuff. So you ready? <clears throat> Check this out. This first one is a video uh, from the uh, Detroit Pistons uh, basketball player, Jaden Ivey. Check it out. This is really good news. Real reminder for you and I. Watch this. First, I just want to say that, that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Um, and to to any any of you know the world that's hearing this message um the kingdom of heaven is near um jesus is coming back and we all have to repent for our sins um and and we have to put our faith in jesus he will come back um when you least expect it and you know it's it's, it's time to, to wake up if you haven't put your faith in jesus christ Man, that message was so spot on, direct and to the point. Jesus is coming back and you better wake up. You haven't put your trust in him yet. You better do it. Uh, we try to tell people that all the time, but man, how I appreciate that. Coming from pro sports and uh, Jaden Ivey out of the NBA, fantastic scene. In fact, it's really interesting to watch 
if you're watching pro sports, how many people are starting to come out and talk about Jesus? It, it's even happening in golf. Maybe you saw this, the winner of uh, the Augusta champion, the Mas championship, the Masters championship just uh, the other day, uh, this past week, uh, Scott Scheffler, and guess what? He's asked by the CBS reporter, hey, he's talking to him a little bit about golf and so forth. And then he finally gets around to this question. I'm thinking CBS wasn't thinking this is going to be the answer when he asks them, well, what is it that defines you? This is good to see. People all the time. Yeah, can I follow up? What do you think defines you? Gosh, I don't know. You probably have to ask my wife. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, I'm a faithful guy. I believe in, in, in a creator. I believe in Jesus. Ultimately, I think that's what defines me the most. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like I've given a plot, been given a platform to compete and you know show my talent. Um, it's not anything that I did. You know, I think I sat up here a couple of years ago doing the the interview after the 2022 Masters, and it's like, yeah, I was underprepared for what was about to happen. I I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't. Um, you know, I was very anxious that morning. I didn't know what to expect. And, um, it's hard to describe the feeling, but I think that's what defines me the most is my faith. You know, I believe in one creator and I've been called to come out here, do my best compete and uh, glorify God. And that's pretty much it. That is, that cool. is cool. I've been called to compete and glorify God. That's what defines me. Jesus Christ. That is great. It's so cool to see these things happening, especially with what is going on in the churches. This is insane. Wait till I show you this next thing. So you see what's going on pro sports. People are pro proclaiming Jesus. Jesus is the reason I live. Jesus is coming back. Now wait till I show you this next one. So Pastor Mark Driscoll, uh, formerly with the Mars Hill Congregation, now he's in Arizona leading a church there. He was invited to speak at a men's conference. Wait till you see what happened here. So my friend, Pastor Tim Thompson from 412 Church in Temecula. By the way, if you're looking for a great church and you're in Southern California area, especially in Temecula, Murrieta area, or San Diego, uh, 412 Church in Temecula is a great place with Pastor Tim. And uh, in fact, it's my home church too. Uh, but I'm going to have Pastor Tim comment on this because I would comment, but he did such an outstanding job. So again, he's going to comment, Mark Driscoll, invited to speak at a men's conference. Wait till you see what happens here. This is one of those, you can't make this up. Now, it's true. This really happened. Check it out. Men's conference hires a male stripper from Las Vegas to do a pole dance at the opening of a men's conference. Crazy times we're living in. I can't even believe that this is what I'm reporting to you today. But get this. Not only did this church hire a male stripper pole dancer to open their men's conference, when Pastor Mark Driscoll called it out for what it was, the demonic nature of that event, they kicked him out of the event. Take a look at this. But let me do this. Um, I've been up since 1 o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in the strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends.
And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. So what I see here is a man that A, is telling the truth when for some reason the other pastors wouldn't tell the truth. B, I see a man being very humble. He's called out, I don't know if you caught that, but the pastor of the church said, you're out of line, Mark, and then he said, you're done. He wants Mark off the stage, and Mark said, I'll receive that, and he humbly goes and gets his things to quietly and calmly exit the platform. Watch what happens next. So you look at that. There's more to this video. I want to encourage you to watch the entire video by Pastor Tim. Go to his Instagram. It's there on Our Watch. Uh, uh, Pastor Tim Thompson, check out the whole thing. But it's pretty unbelievable. I mean, you guys, it's a men's conference. A pastor invites a male stripper to do a pole dance. That was supposed to be a man's conference. You invite Mark Driscoll. Mark Driscoll <laughs> calls him out. I mean, look at this. And then the pastor goes up and accuses him. You, you can watch the whole video over at Pastor Tim's Instagram. But I... Uh, he goes up and he calls him out and says, he should have been Matthew 18, should have brought me in the back, should have talked to me in private about that. What kind of, let me ask you this, what kind of pastor would do something like that? Have a, a male stripper come to a men's conference unless you're doing a gay men's conference, which that was not. I, don't, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm looking at this going, what kind of pastor? I'm sure you guys have thoughts on that. I know I do. So you, you, see, you see the contrast, right? You have the NBA with Jaden Ivey. You have professional golf. I mean, you know, I can find all kinds of sports and all kinds of people. People are proclaiming Jesus and righteousness and truth. And this is what's going on in the church? Friends, this is the problem. And this is why so many people are saying, I've had it, I want online church because I can't find a church in my area. Hence, uh, this, is, this is why People are, they're, they're just done. They, they go to a church that's in their community, and they're saying, I can't find a pastor. So like, he won't preach the truth. All he wants to do is get people there, entertain people, and all of this other nonsense that's out there. Wow. Hence, we have the remnant church. And then you get complaints from, well, you need to go to a church, and you, you, that's what you get. That's wicked. Check this out. This is Paul Washer. Like him or hate him. Check out what Paul Washer has to say. This is a short video, but he calls the same thing out. Check it out, Paul Washer. What do you think? the ministers of Christ. So there you go. I, you know, I, I agree, and I can say that I've been a pastor for uh, many years. And you look, and there's so few, and they're pressing forward in righteousness again. You know, I just remind. I want to thank my friend Pastor Tim Thompson in Temecula. Again, if you're there, if you want a church that's going to stand up for truth, go there. All right. So let's get to some of the gaslighting. You're going to look at this and go, you got to be kidding me. You can't make this up. No, there's some of the gaslighting going on. So O.J. Simpson dies last week, right? We all remember that. I mean, if you're old, you know, if you're old enough to remember, you remember that. O.J., he's got the white Ford Bronco driving down the freeway in Los Angeles area. Got all the cop cars chasing him. We all remember that. The glove don't fit, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so, uh <laughs> This, this, is like, this is definitely, you can't make this up, gaslighting uh, going on. So uh, check it out. Short video for you. 
But it was so racially charged because of what had happened uh, just before with Rodney King, but also just how black Americans feel about policing. It's not like O.J. Simpson was the, the leader of the civil rights movement of his era. You right. know, he wasn't a social justice leader, but he represented something for the black community in that moment, in that trial, particularly because there were two white people who had been killed. And the, the history around how black people have been persecuted um, during slavery, there were, there were just so many layers. And I guess I would just close with this, is that there was racial tension then, there is racial tension now. It might not be the backdrop of the Trump campaign, but until this country is ready to actually have an honest conversation about the racial dynamics from our origin story till today, we will always have moments like O.J. Simpson that manifest, and our country will always be divided if we don't actually deal with the issue of race. Wow, there it is, right from the Communist News Network, CNN itself. Thank you, Dinesh D'Souza, for posting that. So OJ, the people are connected with OJ, the black community, because he killed white people. I was like, this is just insane. But the gaslighting doesn't stop there. So if that wasn't enough, this is, uh, check this out. This is a Ducey. He's challenging, uh, what's his name? John Kirby, who's Biden's spokesperson, uh, regarding money going to Iran. Uh, because Iran uses money to kill Jews. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's, let's watch this, because it's just more gaslighting. Is there any regret here about unfreezing billions of dollars for Iranian leaders during the president's administration? What unfreezing are you talking about? He unfroze billions of dollars. For, for there Iranian was... leaders? Yeah. Really? I don't think so. Okay, so, first of all... It's for humanitarian purposes, but doesn't that... But you don't un... believe me. Well, doesn't that free up money for them to spend on other stuff? Where do you get the money for an unprecedented number of munitions to, to fire at Israel? So first of all, I'm betting if they're sitting in Tehran, they're taking it seriously when President Biden says he's going to defend Israel. We put skin in the game, a whole heck of a lot of it, and knocked almost everything out of the sky. So I'm betting they're taking it pretty seriously. And as for this, uh, this unfreezing, none of that fund, none of those funds, funds set up in an account, by the way, by the previous administration, goes directly to the supreme leader of the IRGC, can only be used for humanitarian purposes, and we're watching. Now that is hilarious. You just know those Iranian leaders are taking Biden seriously. I mean, Biden, with he's going to threaten us all and give us another billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. And the money's, well, it's going to go to the Supreme Leader over there. We know that. So, what, $5 billion is going to go to him? What's he, it's just, like, I don't know. I mean, this is insane. They're going to use this. Of course we can trust them. They're going to use it for good, good things. Like, how about launching rockets and missiles into Israel and building our nuclear weapons supply and supplying Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and whoever else? No, they would never do something like that. Iran, no, why would they do something like, I mean, this is just stupid. Like, they're going to, like, Biden is a real big threat to them over in Iran or China or Putin or anybody else. I mean, really, Mr. Ice Cream Man himself? Big threat? Mr. Basement Man? Mr. Let Me Sniff Somebody Else's Hair Man? I don't think he's a big threat. I'm just guessing. I don't think anybody's afraid of him. You wouldn't be afraid of him. Maybe the IRS you'd be afraid of, or you know the FBI because we don't know what they're going to do. But Biden, seriously, come on. All right, so let's just throw a little bit more out there for y'all as we get ready to wrap up here. Here is the WHO director, World Health Organization director, because he cares for your safety and he wants to make sure that you don't eat too much meat. So let's see what he has to say now, coming from Mr. Tedros. Our food systems are harming the health of people and planet. Food systems contribute to over 30% of greenhouse gas emissions and account for almost one-third of the global burden of disease. Transforming food systems is therefore essential by shifting towards healthier, diversified, and more plant-based diets. If food systems delivered healthy diets for all, we could save 8 million lives per year. 
WHO is committed to supporting countries to develop and implement policies to improve diets and fight climate change. I'm therefore very pleased that over 130 countries have signed the COP28 UAE Declaration on Climate and Health. Together, we can protect and promote the health of both people and planet. There you go. I mean, it's it's a climate. Eat, listen, eat bugs because it's for your health. It's for your children's health. It's for your grandkids' health. It's for everybody's health. Don't eat meat. It's about the climate. We're going to save the world. These are lies. We know this. Check this out. First Timothy chapter 4. The Bible warned us about these people. This is exactly what the Bible says. Now, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, I'm thinking all the gender talk we hear is leading that direction, and commanding to abstain from foods or meats, literally, we read it in the Greek, for which God created to be received with thanksgiving, by those who believe and know the truth, for every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So what's the context of this? It tells us, in the latter times, they'll depart from the truth, they won't put up with it, and they'll command that you don't eat meat. No, you can't make this up, but the Bible did warn us about that. Hey, listen, check out these shirts you get. You can't make this up shirt, the wokeism things. Check out the online store at hopeforourtimes.com. And I uh, want to thank all of you guys for joining us today. Listen, this Sunday morning, it's going to be terrific. We're going to be continuing in the Gospel of John. I hope that you can join us. And then also Sunday night, we're going to be in uh, uh, Daniel chapter 11. God bless you guys. See you.